welcome back. We're back where we left off, at 5,000 feet and 250 knots selected. We'll go through some basic automation handling, utilising the autopilot and the flight control unit, FCU. Keep the autopilot and auto thrust engaged for this session, with the thrust levers in the climb detent. As we saw just after takeoff, the speed selector on the FCU is used to set a speed target. With the speed knob pushed in, we're in managed mode, where the Flight Management Guidance Computer, FMGC, sets an appropriate speed, considering any constraints contained within the flight plan. Pulling the speed knob sets selected speed mode, where we set our own speed target. To demonstrate selected speed mode, set a speed of 220 in the FCU. Good, now a speed target of 220 knots is set, the auto thrust reduces power to allow us to slow down towards it. The auto thrust is used throughout the flight, from liftoff to just before touchdown. On the primary flight display, PFD, there is a green dot on the speed tape. This represents our minimum drag speed and is known as green dot. Green dot speed increases with both weight and altitude and is the speed at which we have minimum fuel burn, which we'd select if we have to fly a holding pattern. Now select speed 250 to bring us back up to 250 knots. The auto thrust now adds power up to a maximum of climb thrust. Great, keep us at 250 knots. Below 10,000 feet in most airspace types, 250 knots is the speed limit. We're currently following the flight plan in nav mode, where the autopilot flies us along our route. See how the autopilot takes us around the turn at Novma. Next we can look at headings. The heading knob has the same pulled or pushed, selected or managed logic. When pushed, the autopilot is commanded to follow the flight plan route as programmed in the FMGC. Turning and pulling the heading knob allows us to select a heading, usually at the request of ATC or for weather avoidance. Jetliner 488, turn right, heading 190 degrees. Right heading 190 degrees, Jetliner 488. Turn the heading knob to preset heading 190, then pull the knob to select it. Now we enter heading mode and the autopilot will turn us to our selected heading. Now the autopilot rolls us to wings level on our selected heading.
Next, we'll look at altitude control. We're currently at an altitude of 5,000 feet using the QNH1010 altimeter setting reported by Gatwick. An indicated altitude is based on the pressure setting we're using, which changes throughout the day and between locations. One aeroplane may be flying towards another, each using different altimeter settings, making vertical separation unreliable. To fix this problem, when commencing a climb above what's known as the transition level, all aircraft use the same altimeter setting, known as standard. Standard is QNH1013, or altimeter 29.92. Jetliner 488 on this heading, climb flight level 120. Climbing flight level 120, jetliner 488. Again, to set a selected altitude, turn the out knob to set the target altitude in the FCU and pull to select. Give it a try, turn the out knob to set 12,000 in the FCU and pull the knob. We now see thrust climb and open climb at the top of the PFD, showing us that climb thrust is being set and we're in open climb mode. Notice how we leave the thrust levers in the climb detent throughout and the levers don't move in response to the auto thrust. Open climb mode uses pitch to achieve our target speed, which is still set to 250 knots. As 12,000 feet is above the transition level for this airspace, we now set the altimeter to standard by pulling the barrow knob to the left of the FCU. We're now using the standard pressure setting, so rather than climbing to altitude 12,000 feet, we say we're climbing to flight level 120. Above 10,000 feet, or flight level 100, the 250 knot speed restriction no longer applies. Select a speed of 290 knots. As open climb uses pitch to control speed, the nose is being lowered to allow us to accelerate. Above flight level 100, we could turn off the seatbelt sign but we can get turbulence as we pass through cloud layers, so leave the signs on for now. As we reach the altitude set in the FCU, Alt Star engages, showing us the autopilot will capture our selected altitude or flight level. We're now established at flight level 120, and out mode on the PFD shows that the autopilot will keep us here. Jetliner 488, climb flight level 210. Climbing flight level 210, jetliner 488. Okay, set 21,000 with the out knob into the FCU and pull for open climb. Great, we're now climbing up to flight level 210. Icing can be a real problem when flying airliners in cloud, and so we have an engine intakes. We're climbing through the cloud layer above, so let's use the engine anti-ice. 
turn on the anti-ice for both engines, locate ensure that the thrust levers are in the climb detent. Turn on the anti-ice for both engines, locate it on the overhead panel. Good, this diverts hot air around the inside of the intakes, keeping them warm and free of ice. To get through the clouds more quickly for a comfortable ride and to reduce our icing exposure, select a speed of 270 and see what happens. Keep heading 190 selected. Remember how Open Climb uses pitch to control speed? Now we've selected a lower speed target, the autopilot pulls the nose up in order to trade airspeed for altitude, giving us a boost in climb performance known as a zoom climb. We're using 270 knots as that is roughly the airspeed which gives the best rate of climb in the A320, getting us through the cloud layer in the minimum time.
Now we can see blue sky above us. We must be getting close to leaving the cloud layer. We're just getting out of the cloud now, so we can turn off the engine anti-ice. Great, it's all blue skies now. Turn off the seatbelt sign and select 290 knots again. at its climb setting, so the autopilot lowers the nose to accelerate. Great, now the passengers are free to move about the cabin and we're speeding back up. Good job. We'll come back once we're in the cruise. 